हेलो गाइस दिस इज अविनाश एंड यू आर वाचिंग एवरीथिंग मेटलर्जी सो फ्रेंड्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेकेंडरी स्टील मेकिंग एंड द लैडल ट्रीटमेंट्स सो इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस अबाउट डी गैसिंग ओके इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डी ऑक्सीडेशन सो नाउ वी विल सी व्हाट इज डी गैसिंग एंड हाउ इट इज डन सो ड्यूरिंग स्टील मेकिंग नॉट ओनली ऑक्सीजन बट अदर गैसेस लाइक नाइट्रोजन एंड हाइड्रोजन ओके विल बी डिसॉल्व इन द स्टील ओके so we have to remove this why because this have very uh, negative effects on the steel on the properties of the steel so that is why the removal of this nitrogen and hydrogen from the steel is termed as degassing okay so both this nitrogen and hydrogen will be impairing the mechanical properties of the steel so <clears throat> similarly the liquid steel has more solubility of these gases whereas as compared to the solid steel so that is why we have to remove it this excess gases will result in the form of either blow holes or porosities and also inclusions may be formed for example nitrates and everything may be formed okay we have discussed all this stuff in deoxidation the same thing will be applicable here okay so similarly the excess hydrogen results also in some porosity and pin holes that means the defects in the structures so that is why we have to remove this so here these gases nitrogen and hydrogen can be removed in the form of molecular gases that means for example if i take this is the nascent hydrogen that is dissolved it can be converted into molecular hydrogen similarly nitrogen also okay so if you consider the le chatelier principle here for the removal of these gases we require higher degree of vacuum okay higher degree of vacuum is needed here why because if you see here uh, this is nascent so generally it is zero and this is half so from zero moles to half moles of gas that means from we know while increasing the pressure what happens the reaction moves from higher moles to lower moles that means here the backward reaction that is why we are decreasing the pressure to a very low value that means about 1 mm of mercury is maintained so that a higher degree of vacuum is generated and the forward reaction can easily be taking place and hydrogen and nitrogen can be removed out okay so there are generally three different methods of this degassing the first one is ladle degassing second is stream degassing and the third is recirculation okay so these are the three types ladle degassing stream degassing and recirculation degassing so now we'll individually see what is what is ladle degassing stream degassing and recirculation degassing so generally recirculation degassing is important but we'll be discussing all the three types okay so the first one ladle degassing so ladle degassing is nothing but in this a ladle containing a molten steel is placed in a chamber which is evacuated okay that means the ladle which is containing the steel is kept in a vacuum chamber and it is allowed to degas so how it is done so for example if this is the vacuum chamber okay if this is the vacuum chamber the ladle is kept inside okay if this is the ladle which contains the steel and the slag layer and from the bottom it is purged through organ okay this is the vacuum chamber from where there will be some vacuum pump here so that if there is any gases that are formed it is removed outside to maintain the vacuum okay so this is the vacuum chamber and here will be containing an addition hopper also if we are required to add any alloying elements we can do in this degassing process only okay so this is the setup of ladle degassing where a ladle containing steel 
is kept in this vacuum chamber this is the vacuum chamber okay where it is kept in this vacuum chamber so that what happens if there is any uh, gases that means like nitrogen or hydrogen present it is removed out into the chamber and these gases are taken out through this vacuum pump okay this is called the radial degassing and if you observe here we are imposing argon so this is the argon gas okay so for effective degassing it is necessary to purge some argon from the bottom why because the stirring enhances the removal of the gas okay so whatever the stirring is done through because of this gas it will be enhancing the rate at which the gas is removed out okay so and i already discussed about the pressure pressure here must be about 1 mm to 10 mm Hg. Okay, this pressure is maintained and during this degassing, additions may be done after the degassing through this addition hopper for any alloying elements or to add any alloying element or so. Okay, so this is ladle degassing. So the next type is stream degassing. Okay, the next one is second type is stream degassing. Okay, so here also there are two types generally ladle to mold degassing and ladle to ladle. So I'll explain first how what is this stream degassing and then we'll look at the two different types. Okay, so in this stream degassing method, the molten steel is teamed into another vessel which is just under vacuum, that means either from uh, ladle we are sending into the vacuum chamber that means another container that is present in the vacuum chamber so a stream of molten metal is generated okay so the sudden exposure of molten stream in the vacuum leads to very rapid degassing okay why because there will be some increase in the surface area created by this breakup of the stream into the droplets so i'll explain it again so, for example, I am considering the first model that is uh, first type, you can say the ladle to mold. Ladle to mold degassing. So, here there will be a vacuum chamber, okay, where there will be some mold present in it, okay, there will be some mold present in it and from the ladle, this is a ladle, okay. From the ladle, it is steamed into some intermediate vessel. This is the intermediate vessel. Um, name it Tandish because it is an intermediate vessel. So, from this, the steel will be coming into this, okay, into the Tandish. And here, from uh, with the help of a stopper rod, generally they call a stopper rod, okay. On removing it, what happens? This steel, molten steel, falls down and forms a stream like this, okay. So, this stream will be breaking up into small droplets, tiny droplets. So, because of this formation of the tiny droplets here, what happens? The reaction area or the surface area is also increased. That is why here <coughs> we can see rapid degassing taking place. Okay, rapid degassing can be done in the stream degassing because of the breakup of the stream into tiny droplets okay so the major amount of degassing occurs during this fall whatever this fall is there from falling from this tundish to the mold then only the maximum amount of degassing is done why because while falling down only these break down into tiny droplets okay so the height of pouring is an important parameter once after it is falling into the mold what happens it is again for forming a liquid there are no droplets so that is why sufficient amount of height is to be given in order to do or in order to achieve efficient degassing okay so this is about stream degassing uh, here ladle to ladle degassing is then so similarly ladle to ladle ladle to ladle is nothing but in the vacuum chamber there will be a ladle placed and here also there will be 
ladle itself there is no intermediate vessel okay so directly this is done directly ladle is kept inside and from the ladle only the hot metal is done and the phenomenon is the same and uh, i think i forgot here there will be obviously vacuum pump okay so that the formed gases are removed out so this is nothing but ladle to ladle both are similar only but the use of mold and the use of ladle is only difference between the both types okay this is about stream degassing so now we'll discuss about the third type of degassing that is nothing but the recirculation degassing recirculation degassing is one of the most important type because in steel plants also you will be seeing or these recirculation degassing methods are used so in this the molten steel is allowed to circulate in the vacuum chamber continuously okay that means the molten steel is allowed to circulate from the molten chamber vacuum chamber continuously in order to degas it okay so generally there are two types in this uh, recirculation degassing rh and dh so we'll discuss rh degasser in this video rh degassing so in this technology what happens is cylindrical refractory lined vessel okay cylindrical refractory lined shell you can call shell with two legs are used okay are designed such that steel is raised in one leg and falls back into the ladle after the degassing through the other leg so for example if you see the apparatus this is for example uh, you know this is a type of ladle treatment so this is a ladle in which there is uh, steel in it so this is the chamber okay so this is a chamber so generally this is a chamber in which there are two legs okay if you see these are the legs of this chamber okay where it is dipped into the steel so this is the steel bath and this is the slag layer okay so this is steel this is the vacuum chamber okay and these are the legs these are the two legs legs of the chamber which are called snorkels okay the legs are known as snorkels so what happens here is usually and this there is one more inlet here through which argon is sent in okay we'll discuss the process okay so the steel will go into this vacuum chamber from one leg degassing is done in the vacuum chamber and it falls back through the other leg okay this is how the recirculation take place steel will go into the vacuum chamber degassing will be taking place and then it comes down through the other leg okay so as i already said in this rh degassing there is a cylindrical refractor this is the cylindrical refractory lined shell with two legs okay so that the steel is raised in one leg and falls back in from the other leg after the degassing is done okay so this is rh degassing so the cylindrical shell is usually lined with fire bricks okay the refract as i said it is refractory line so it is fire bricks are used as refractories in this upper portion and alumina bricks is used alumina is used in the lower portion and also the legs okay so the fire bricks are used in the upper portion refractory and the lower portion of the cylindrical vessel including these legs are lined using alumina refractories okay you know why these are used because in order to sustain high temperatures so these legs are also lined with these alumina refractories so here as i already said a lifter gas argon is injected into this inlet in order to increase the velocity that means if this gas it comes expands and what what it does it increases the velocity of this molten steel okay it increases the molten steel velocity entering into this snorkel 
okay so this is how the rh degassing will be taking place okay so this is about recirculation degassing okay so now we'll briefly discuss about the operation of this rh degassing that means the mechanism how this rh degassing is done okay so the first one is heating the cylindrical chamber okay preheating the cylindrical chamber in order to decrease any effects or to reduce the failure i mean to reduce the chances of failure in this refractory lining we have to preheat it to about 900 to 1500 degrees celsius okay the cylindrical shell or the cylindrical chamber is heated to about 900 to 1500 degrees okay so the next after this heating what will be done this is lowered and uh, this is lowered into the molten steel and we know this as the chamber is evacuated the molten steel begins to rise into the chamber so the next one is the molten steel rises rises into the vacuum chamber okay so and uh, this after when the uh, cylindrical chamber is lowered and uh, when the molten steel starts to raise up then the lifter gas is introduced so here only the lifter gas lifter gas is nothing but the argon okay lifter gas is introduced the lifter gas is introduced in it and what happens what is the uh, basic mechanism of why this lifter gas increases the velocity that it is nothing but the gas whatever argon gas we are uh, sending in it it expands this gas expands and create a buoyant force okay so on expansion of this gas there will be a buoyant force created and because of this buoyant force only the speed of the molten steel will be increased so next is nothing but the steel which is sent in will be degassed whatever steel rises up into the chamber it gets degassed and then flows back degassed and flows back through the other snorkel or the other leg okay so here also this degassed steel after the degassing what happens because of the vacuum and the removal of the gases the temperature decreases okay this degassed steel is cooler as compared to the undegassed steel that is present in the uh, ladle okay so because of this difference again the degas steel is slightly cooler than the steel in the ladle so here also there will be some buoyant force created buoyancy force will be created and because of this buoyancy force is created because of the density differences okay so we know cooler the cooler steel will have more density as compared to the higher temperature steel so due to this difference in the densities of the steel there will be some buoyancy force created buoyancy force created because of the density differences okay and this <clears throat> buoyancy force is used in stirring the bath okay in stirring the bath that means whatever the fresh steel or uh, we can call the steel which is undegassed will be coming up into the snorkel and the degassed steel will be settling down okay and this is the recirculation and this stirring of the bath is done because of the buoyancy force created due to the density differences okay so this is how the stirring of the bath is taking place and here the rate of circulation only controls the degassing okay that means the circulation rate the rate at which the circulation is taking place and uh, will be depending the rate at which the circulation is taking place will be controlling the degassing okay and this circulation rate will be depending upon the amount of lifter gas and also the degree of vacuum okay so this is about rh degassing 
so here also after this we can also add the alloying elements so alloy additions can be done as uh, other degassing techniques so this is about rh degassing so the uh, dh degassing is there but it is not that important both are similar but in dh degassing only one snorkel is present and the whole chamber is moved up and down so that the steel will go into the vacuum chamber degas and comes down okay so this cycle is repeated for about 20 times so that the whole amount of steel is degas that is done in dh degassing and what we have discussed is rh degassing so this is about all the types of degassing techniques okay so thank you guys thank you for watching and if you like the content whatever i have making in this ferrous extraction series please hit the like button and also share with all the gate aspirants so thank you guys